Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father God. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Father God, for all that who have gathered here tonight, Father God. Your word says that where two or three are gathered, you will be in the midst of them, Father God. So I thank you, Father God, for gathering the saints, Father God, to glean in and to listen to your word, Father God. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for we do not think one highly one above the other, Father God, but we all come as co-laborers, Father God, in your kingdom, Father God, and we thank you, Father God. We ask, Lord, that you would prepare our hearts, Father God, that it be good soil for the word to be planted and rooted in our hearts, Father God. Your word says that I have hidden your word in my heart that we may not sin against you, Father God. So we thank you, Father God, for planting your word, Father God, so we could be able to grow, Father God, in the things of you. We thank you for this time. We thank you for doors, Father God, who, who is bringing forth your word, Father God. I ask, Lord, that you, Holy Spirit, Father God, speak through doors, Father God, because you are the teacher of the church. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for that. Okay, ladies and gents. So uh, this is my cousin. Her name is Doris Belford. Uh, she, ever since I stepped into uh, into the walk with God, Doris has been holding my hand. She's my, I call her the yin to my yang, okay? So uh, she's been slapping me upside the head every time I, I, you know, I end up falling into the worldly ways, but I thank her for that. And uh, she is a very good speaker. She's eloquent in her words. She comes from a, a background with so many brothers and sisters, but uh, uh, she does, she has a way with uh, just teaching us how to, how to keep leaning into God. So I thank you guys for allowing her to speak into your life today. And uh, I just ask that you just, you know, listen with an open heart and an open mind and an open spirit. Okay. So here she goes. Thank you, Doris Day Belfer. Come on, girl. Thanks, sis. Um, and for anybody that's joining us for the first time, thank you and welcome to our life group Bible study for today. Um, you know, we pretty much have built this platform just to kind of more like a resource center for anybody and everybody that's looking for God, uh, trying to figure out how to connect with him, how to build with him. And that's pretty much why we started this off. <laughs> um, the great thing about our life group is the leaders, each and every one of us, uh, come from different walks of life. And the testimonies that each and every one carry um, is very, very strong. And obviously, they uh, target different audiences, which I'm very grateful for. Um, so for tonight, you know, uh, I thank you for allowing me to kick off the month of June. We've been in the study about learning about God's needs. Um, and so with this lesson tonight, I've actually titled it as in what's in a name. Um, so what's in a name? Well, just like how words are powerful when spoken, there's power in a name. It's what people will call you, but most importantly, it's the name that you choose to answer to. <clears throat> when you meet someone, usually the first question that they ask is, who are you or what's your name? So could you imagine walking around and people calling you based off of your hairstyle? Hey, curly hair. Yeah, you, there you go. Thank you, curly hair. Or what about based off of what you got on? Green shirt, you right there with the green shirt or glasses. The one with the glasses and the green shirt. Yeah, you right there, okay? So a name speaks to our identity and our uniqueness, giving us a sense of value and can describe who we are. It can represent our own view of ourselves in the world and how we want other people to see us. Sometimes we try to live up to our names and sometimes we try to uh, run away from it. Sometimes it's because of the stronghold that the names carry. A name can be fluid, always changing, depending on our situation, our circumstances, or by our decision on which name we answer to over time. Think of a brand or a label and your expectation of that brand. See, brands can make a person think of the type of service. It could think of a good quality and reliability, or sometimes it can make a person think of a total opposite of things. For an example, think of Nike versus LA Gear. What about McDonald's versus Chipotle? 
How about Starbucks versus Jamba Juice? So see, just like brands and labels, our names deliver an expectation. It provides a type of quality and service. So as a homework assignment, I encouraged everyone to do some research on your own names. And I'll get to the reason why a little bit later, but I will go ahead and start, I'll, I'll use my name as an example. So my first name is Doris Gay. Doris meaning gift, day as in a day. Uh, this name is usually associated with my career, um, usually associated with school, and Doris is usually associated with my dad's side of the family. With this name, it makes me feel sociable, selfless, and open-minded. Paula, my middle name, means little and humble. This name is rarely spoken, but I'm also named after my dad, who was also reserved and humble. Very similar, because that's exactly how I feel with this name. Uh, my other nickname is Leilani, means heavenly blossom or heavenly woman. This is a name that's usually associated when I'm performing or with my hula brothers and my hula sisters. With this name, it makes me feel feminine and graceful. Koli, which is my family name. See, my grandmother couldn't really, uh, she really couldn't pronounce Doris, the Ds. So instead, it was Toli, Koli. Uh, with this name, it means sound or voice. Again, this is associated to my mom's side of the family. It's associated to my siblings and my family friends. With this name, it makes me feel masculine, confident, essential, and respected. <clears throat> Didi. Didi is a name that is associated with like my close friends or my nieces and my nephews. It means raging woman, delight, or divine. Now with this name, I feel loved, I feel playful, and I feel dominating. My last name, Belford. Bell is a title of a lord or master. Ford means river crossing. This name is usually associated to interviews, or now in my current assignment working at the jails, okay? With this name, it makes me feel delightful, comfortable, and laid back. Have you ever noticed how you feel or respond when someone calls your name? Do you feel or answer the same when your loved ones call you versus your coworker? See, there are emotional and character traits associated to our names and the names that we answer to. I didn't su suggest this research because I wanted to know something, but because I hope everyone has a breakthrough or receives some type of revelation. I pray each of you discover a bit more of your worth with the power behind your own name and what you represent or could represent in this world. <clears throat> Proverbs 22 verse one, it says, a good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver of gold. See, when God speaks a name into existence, we have no other choice but to live up to the name. <clears throat> a name can represent an origin, like Adam, which means earth or son of the red earth. E, which means living or source of life. A name can represent a divine revelation, like Abram, meaning exalted father. But remember, God had changed his name to Abraham, meaning father of multitude. A name can represent a circumstance, like Isaac, meaning laughter. You remember in Genesis, when Sarah was told that she would be giving birth to a son in her old age, she laughed about it. Or what about Naomi? Remember, Naomi means cleanliness, but she changed her name herself to Mara after losing her sons and her husband. Mara meant bitter. A name can represent human characteristics like Esau, which meant Harry. Remember, he was born Harry. Sometimes a name can also represent family, uh, like Jenny. Jenny is named after, her middle name is named after Nafanua, who was a Samoan goddess princess warrior who fought to free her people from slavery. <laughs> a name can also represent things that we like, or maybe sometimes just to be unique. Like for example, Chevy, which means horseman or knight, uh, I remember a girl who went to elementary with us. Her name was Say My Darling, which actually meant my dearly beloved. Or like Nevaeh, 
Nevea spelled pretty much as heaven spelled backwards. And sometimes a name can also represent history or events like Moses, which means to draw out or deliver. Remember it. And in Exodus, we learned that he was drawn out from the Nile River by Pharaoh's daughter. And he was also the one who led his people out into the promised land. Or Jesus, which also was derived from Yahshua, meaning to deliver or to rescue. <laughs> so what's in God's name? There's power in his name. There's healing and revelation. There's miracles and comfort. There's love and restoration. There's peace and deliverance. There's strength and there's so much more behind his name. So just a few questions I wanted to ask just for everybody to kind of keep it on the back of their mind. Now that we have a better understanding on what's in a name, what is the name of God that you call upon? Who do you run to or who do you call upon? Why do you call that name or use that specific name? When do you call him? Psalm 72 verse 17 says, may his name endure forever. See, from Aramis, we learned about the great I am and his power over all things and his eternal nature. Through Sister Brene, we learned of El Shaddai, meaning the God Almighty, the all-sufficient one, and the God who is more than enough. Brene also spoke about the importance of knowing our position and the posture that we choose in our life when we approach him. <clears throat> Sister Ottawa spoke about El Roy, the God who sees me. This was a great reminder that not only does he see each of us, but he sees our hearts, our circumstances, and our situations. He sees everything. Tonight, I want to introduce you to Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. Now, in Genesis, <laughs> we learned about Abraham and Sarah whom after years of learning how to walk by faith, experienced the greatest joy of their life with the birth of their son at the age of 191. Isaac came in this world as the one whom God would form a great nation through. But sometime later, God tested Abraham when he told him to take his only son to the region of Moriah and to sacrifice him on burnt offering on a mountain. When they reached the place God spoke about, Abraham built an altar. He arranged the wood, then he bounded his son and laid him on the altar on top of that wood. Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son when God called out for him and told him not to lay a hand on a boy. Abraham looked up and in a bush nearby, he saw a ram caught by a torn. So Abraham went over, he took that ram and he sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. To this day, Genesis 22 and 14, it tells us, so Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. Or what about in John? In John, we heard about Jesus feeding 5,000. Just like Abraham, Jesus tested his disciples when he asked them where they could buy enough bread to feed the crowd. One disciple replied that it would take more than about half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each person. And another disciple pointed out a boy who had five loaves and two fishes. Jesus took the loaves and fish, gave thanks and passed them out. When everyone had enough to eat, Jesus told the disciples to gather the leftover pieces, uh, which was enough to fill about 12 baskets. You see, that's what Jehovah Jireh does, provides. <clears throat> so Abraham already went through many faith stretching experiences. So why did God choose to test them at this point? Why did Jesus test his disciples, even though he had in mind what he was already going to do? For Abraham, all his experiences were preparation for the test of his obedience at the cost of his promised son. For the disciples, I believe their test was based on who they would rely on. So in Philippians 4, verse 19, says, my God will supply my every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Think of one faith stretching situation that you're facing today. Is it your finances and the last $20 that you're holding on to until payday? I know what that feels like. But can he multiply the little that you give freely? 
maybe it's that person in your life or maybe the group of friends in your life that you refuse to let go of. He's been sending you so many different signs and stuff, but yet you still refuse to walk away from it. Don't you trust him enough to supply and replace them with something better? Are you still experimenting in things you know you're not supposed to? Well, how can he continue to use you if you're not if you're still distracted in what you're doing? Have you been comfortable in your job or your community, but God's called you for a new assignment in another company or maybe a new state? You see, comfort is a trap to keep us where we are. Don't you want to see what else he got in store for you? When was the last time you checked your faith meter? Are you learning lessons that will help you handle the test God has for you tomorrow? How can God use it to prepare you for tomorrow? Ask God to make you teachable in all seasons to prepare you for your bigger test that's coming tomorrow. In Proverbs 18, verse 10, it says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run, uh, the righteous run to it and are saved. So what's so important about learning God's name? Well, just the same when people call us, we want to address our father, our heavenly father by name. How we call him reminds us about who we are talking to and what he represents in our life. For me, the names I typically call upon are El Shaddai, Lord God Almighty, Yahweh, Lord or Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides, and Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. But after last week's a study, I now also call on El Roy, my God who sees me, because boy, did he reveal a lot of things for us last week. When speaking to God, I typically call his name based on the season I'm in or my circumstances. You know, like when I'm stressed, when I'm disturbed and I need help, when he's answered a prayer or filled with gratitude. Calling God by name gives me an intimate connection with him. Think of times in your life when your partner or child or your loved one has called your name and the feeling connected with it. For instance, if your child calls out to you, mom, what is the feeling that comes up that connects you with them? Or maybe your husband or maybe your wife or maybe it's your partner. You know, when they're calling you sugar or baby Pepe, think of the feeling that's associated with that. <clears throat> See, God wants us to connect with him, but not just any connection. He wants us to draw in for an intimate connection. In James 4, verse 8, it says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. In John 3, verse 16, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have an eternal life. In Psalms 30, verse 4, says, sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name. When speaking to God, I praise and honor him by thanking him for the many things that he has done and represents in my life. You know, like Alpha and Omega, my healer, my creator, my redeemer, Emmanuel, or even Messiah, Abba Father, my almighty, my savior, my judge. God doesn't need our affirmations. But just the same as when we need or want someone to acknowledge or even reaffirm something over us, speaking these names pays respect towards him and acknowledges what he means to us and the things that he's done. So for tonight, I just pray that each person discovers the power in the names of God so that when we pray, we are more direct in who we are approaching and in what we are actually asking or seeking from him. The great I am, the one who is over everything. El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. El Roy, the one who sees. And Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides. So what's in the name? There is power in the name. There is freedom in his name. There is salvation in his name. There is strength in his name. There is you know, if you're looking for a shoulder to cry on, he's there. You just got to call on him. If you're looking for guidance and direction, he's there. There's a name for that too. You just got to call out on that one. You know, one thing I've learned in my walk with him has been, 
I remember before when I, I first started walking with him, my prayers were very broad. You know, it was just, oh, Father God or Lord, you know, and sometimes uh, prayers was also just, oh, I, I pray that you bless this person. I pray that you bless my household. But the more I walked with him, I realized that even in a Bible, it says that he tells us to ask him. You know, if you're looking for things, ask him, go to him. But the thing I also learned was, you know, think of your child when your child comes up to you and your child says, or your niece and nephew says, you know, can you, I want, I want. And you're standing there, you're trying to help them. <clears throat> but all you hear is, I want. So you don't know exactly what they want. You don't know what they need or anything. And that's exactly how my walk was in the beginning with God. Nowadays, after learning more and after discovering the names that he actually has and what they represent, I now go to him based off of those names. If I need healing, my Jehovah Rapha. If I need something, if I need a home, if I need guidance on something, it's my Jehovah Jireh. You know, and again, I just learned of El Roy last week, the God who sees me. Never knew of that one. But when we go to God, he doesn't want us just to come to him. You know, yeah, he, he wants us. But at the same time, he wants us to be a little bit more direct to him. Yes, of course, he knows what's in our heart. You know, sometimes we can't form those words, but he understands your tears because your tear is a direct connection to what it is you're seeking in that. So when you go to him, I pray that you go to him, but go directly to him in the name that in whatever your circumstances is, go towards him with that name. Whatever it is that you're seeking, ask. Don't have such a broad prayer that it's kind of all over the place. Again, think of it when you're trying to help your nieces and nephews or your child. You know, he, he wants you to come to him. But at the same time, sometimes in order for your prayer life to be a little bit stronger, it's also better to go directly to him with a direct prayer. If it's my finances, Lord, Father, God, you know, I have a dollar left to my name, but I'm asking, I got to wait two more weeks for payday. Can you please make a way? Can you just give me 50 bucks? Or maybe it's a hundred dollars added into my pocket to make it last for the rest of the week. Cause I need to put $50 in gas and $50 for an emergency. You know, there you go. Is it trying to go back to school? Lord, Father, God, I'm trying to go back to school. Can you please help me out? Can you please put me in a position surrounded by people who can give me that information, who can help me uh, apply for that grant or that the financial aid, whatever it is. You know, if it's guidance in your career, ask that. Just be a little bit direct with the, with the prayers that you ask. But at the same time of being direct, use his name. That's what it's there for. So that's my study for tonight. And now I kind of open this floor for anybody and everybody. Anybody have any questions or like concerns like about your name? Do you guys, are you guys curious about anything of your names? Ain't nobody curious. <laughs> Somebody. Easier. I just want to, um, I just want to remind everybody that life and death is in the power of the tongue. That in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, it says in Genesis 1, that he spoke things into existence. He said, let there be light, and there was light, by his words. And, he's, and then Genesis, he said that, let's, like, let's make man in our own image. So if we are in the image of God, and God spoke things into existence, how much more powerful are our words speaking towards each other? You know, what kind of atmosphere are we creating with our words? And then like Dora says, she took it even deeper about your name. Because this is what now, what you are called. So every time I said, Ashley, Nia, Badana, okay, whatever, uh, I, I unction you to go and find out what your name means. So what, when people call your name, being something, you, you know, like my name, beginning, um, I looked it up and it was like, a father of a multitude. 
Um, but my middle name is Brazil. And Brazil is um, a redwood tree. And so re redwood trees, um, I kind of found out like what, you know, redwood trees, like why they're significant. They're like old, old as like dinosaur old, old trees, but they're the tallest trees that's on earth and that they they help clean air and water, water, you know? And then um, like Doris, my, my grandma couldn't say Aramis. She couldn't say Aramis. So she started calling me Aramisi. So Aramisi came to Misi. So like when people say Misi, it's like um, my family. Like when people say that, I like I get like a sense of comfort because, you know, my family calls me, you know, Misi. But I went to look up Misi today and it means gift of God in Hebrew. So like you get like... Um, just find out what your your names mean and also i was named after a cologne aramis is a, col a cologne okay don't go don't go find this cologne because to me it's like really brute like it's a really brute cologne i was like dang y'all used to wear this in the 80s like but um it was really popular in the 80s but god says that our prayers are like incense to him and like cologne it's a smell you know and i felt like god uses me a lot in prayer so you know it um try to find out where your names you know where they come from and you know the meaning of your name so thank you doris for today because if i, I would have never knew some of my my name what my name's mean. You know, the interesting thing, like when I was studying on my own name was, um, again, you know, no matter what your names are, you notice how you're, you don't, you have your friends, you have your family, you have your church family, and you notice how sometimes you have different names for each and every one of those groups. But you notice also how you respond to them and the weight or the feeling behind those names, you know? And, and that was something that I learned too for myself. Like, it's funny after I dived a little bit deeper in my name, I was looking at all my names and I'm like, okay, sat there a few times and I'm like, Doris Day, Doris Day, Doris Day. And then again, I go to Koli, which is my family name and it's Koli, Koli, Koli. And it's funny because I feel that weight it, with my family. I feel so confident behind Koli. I feel very masculine behind Koli, you know? And then here's this funny thing that kind of was revealed behind that. I was like, huh, I don't know why, but it made me think of my relationships. And I was sitting there and I'm like, well, how was I feeling in my relationships? And for some reason, I always felt very masculine in my relationships. And then I sat there and I'm like, well, what name was I going by in my relationships? I realized it was Koli. So I'm like sitting there and, you know, it was revealed to me that behind my name fully in my relationship, I feel very, very masculine. Not to say that the guys that, you know, not to say that the men that I were with were weak or anything like that, but I felt like there was this responsibility also tied with my family that just made me so strong that even in my relationship, it was hard to break away from that strength or that masculinity, you know what I mean? And so I was in a relationship and even though I knew I was the girlfriend, I still felt like I was just that masculine one in my relationship because it my, in my relationship, the name used was Foley. And so again, I even go to Leilani. I love my name, Leilani, but it is only associated to when I was performing or with my hula brothers and sisters, you know? But the funny thing about that is Leilani out of all my names, when, when I hear that name, I feel very dainty. I feel very girly. I feel very graceful, which is funny because again, the moment I hear somebody say Koli, it's like it snaps right out of it. And I'm like, here comes that masculinity again. You know what I mean? Like there, there is, there's a weight connection. There is like, there is the stronghold tied in with your name and your uh, your identity and so when I when I wanted to assign this it was more for everybody just to kind of encourage everybody to get more in tune with those names you know what I mean because those names yes it's what people call you but it's also sometimes what you choose to answer to like I'm gonna be honest when I was working at the courthouse 
My coworkers knew me as Doris Day. Friends from school knew me as Doris Day. Now, if I was walking down the courthouse and I would hear Golly, or I would hear D, I kid you not, I was very hesitant with wanting to turn around because if just hearing that name, I knew it wasn't from work and I knew it wasn't from school, which meant somebody, possibly my family or somebody really close from the street is going to be like, you work here? Can you hook me up? You know, kind of like when you're working at a discount or a store and they're looking for that comma in a discount and you're like, oh, well, that's what it was. So at work, I mastered to only answer to Doris Day. And if I heard anything else while walking down the court halls, if I heard anything else besides Doris Day, I knew it was not work. So I purposely would not answer. In fact, I would start walking a little faster just to get to the elevator. Be like, oh, please, oh, please. I hope that elevator is opening up right now. Because again, I knew it was associated with that name, you know? So, I mean, your name can be a blessing. It can reveal things to you that you have never known about yourself. You know what I mean? Like, again, Goli, I've, I've known that for some reason around my family, I've had this masculinity type feeling, but I never knew that it actually tied in with my name and the group that it associates with. And that's the same thing in regards to assignment over everybody. Once you start diving in a little bit more with your name, you know, you start finding out there are like hidden things behind it. You start finding out that there are hidden characteristics that you never really tapped into. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Like there, there is healing even behind finding your name. But could you imagine, that's you discovering your own name. Could you imagine diving deeper and discovering more of God's names the rest of the names that he has there. Like if you could get more in tune with your own name and the power behind your name and the different hidden messages and meanings behind your name, could you imagine what you can discover finding out more of who he is? Could you imagine the power and the freedom behind all that? You know what I mean? Okay, fine, my earthly bound, I'm not rich over here. I don't, you know, I don't have the riches or anything like that. But with my heavenly bound hat on all the time, I am rich in him. I have everything that I can ever need. You know what I mean? And again, it just, it's funny how God gives you these opportunities, an opportunity to come to him or an opportunity to walk away from him, an opportunity to discover who you really are in him or an opportunity to keep acting like you know who you are on the street. You know, he gives you an opportunity to connect you to people or he gives you an opportunity to just stay behind closed doors and pray that your godly husband will get there and find you in door dash or something. You know what I mean? So it's just, <laughs> so I'm just simply saying there is power behind names. Yes, behind our own names. But at the same time, even behind his name. You know what I mean? And like, it, it's funny, like, um, like with Jenny. Jenny, you can st share your story, but I know we had a breakthrough with your, uh, with your middle name. And I never even knew that you had, a, you had the stronghold over your middle name. That's true. Uh, so the, the middle name I was given, you know, in the Samoan culture, uh, we have like these gods and goddesses. And I, and I had this discussion with Nia earlier today. So, you know, my father's side of the family, they're so used to praising this idol named Nafanua. She was known as a warrior goddess back, you know, back in the day. And she was supposed to be the one that saved our people from the enslavement with the Tongan community, right? So, anyways, so I, I uh, my, my dad's side of the family always used to put that on, like, you know, that's your name. You got to free our people, you know, just giving me these responsibilities with just that name. For a long time, I can, uh, for a long time, I, uh, try to like run away from it um and not take on that response because it's not it that that was her time that wasn't me but i didn't realize uh, when doris had she she used me as her guinea pig for this uh for this thing today so when we broke down nafanua she asked me when you hear that what does that make you feel and i said i feel heavy i feel a burden and she's like why and I'm like, because, you know, uh, I feel like I have to be that person, but it's like, the, you know what I'm saying? So 
uh, she made me, she told me, well, that was Nafanua's day in her heydays. And what she had to do when she had Nafanua then, this is her name. So you, you, you know, you take this name and you represent the way you need to. So I felt so free. Like she wrote shame for me, uh, uh, just releasing me from that, from that name. So I'm, I'm thankful uh, that I was able to be freed from it. Even when I spoke to Nia, Nia said that she had relatives who were named after her mother and they felt like they had to, you know, um, to, to meet you know, her expectations and just, that's like how it is in our poly community, you know, when we get named after certain people, we have to you know, meet that expectation, but it's not, that was their days, that's not our days, you know what I'm saying, when we get uh, blessed with a certain name, that's our job to uh, to step out in faith and, and you know giving claim to our own name that we were given from God. So I just uh, thank you <laughs> and welcome, Renee. <laughs> Finally, girl. What were you gonna say, Banana? Sorry for cutting you off, Banana. You're on mute. Finally. <laughs> okay. Um. I was going to say that I had a lot of friends from different countries, and what I noticed is that their names always meant something. And at the time, I didn't think my name meant anything, Madonna, because my mom and my auntie made it up. My mom wanted to name me Prima Donna, and my auntie wanted to name me Bodea, so they mixed it, and my actual family name is Boo Donna. It's not Bud Donna. I changed it when I was 12 years old, so that's what all my family called me. They call me Boo Donna. So if you hear somebody calling me Boo Donna, you know they've known me since I was a little kid. So so I changed it to Bud Donna when I was 12 years old, and I didn't think my name meant anything. But so I had a lot of people that I knew from other countries, and their names always meant something. So I said, you know what? I want to name to mean something. So I thought, and I searched, and I searched, and I finally came up with Phoenix, which is Greek. And it means... You went mute. You're on mute again, Madonna. Uh oh. Hold on. No. There you go. It was um yeah, it was um it's also the Egyptian myth of a legendary bird of fire that um and um and then it's born again as, as a bad baby bird from its own ashes and it keeps going through the cycle so i was like trying to overcome my ghetto upbringing and go get an education so i was like oh that's a good name for me but then i sullied that name up so much with my sexual exploits and now that name is just associated with the x-rated me and i just do not even want to be called that no more <laughs> i really sullied that name up so now i'm back to badana Madonna Shinyan. Rise of the Phoenix over here. But you know what? Even with those, even with uh, how, for those of us that know your story and your testimony, Madonna, honestly, it's, it hits home for me because I've heard your testimony. And although you may not like that name, I mean, look at how you rise. Look at everything that you yeah. overcome, and look how you rise again. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but don't want to be talking about the flight of the Phoenix. I'm about to graduate from Phoenix University, and I just graduated from the University of Phoenix. So, and they was like, ah, oh, the guys that I <laughs> they that I've been with before, were like, oh, I graduated from Phoenix University too. <laughs> you know, you know, and they just be, I mean, I really sullied that name up though. I did. <laughs> That name don't have the same meaning as it did when I first, you know, started calling myself that. Can I comment something? You know, <laughs> that when you when you said the, the phoenix, yes. it just made me think of Jesus. Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life, you know? Right. That now that you came to him, you know, he filtered you clean. Yes. And now that you are you are new a new creation because all things have become new and all all old things have passed away and all things have become new so praise god badonna yeah. that's me too shoot <laughs> jesus 
he 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 he's a uh he's the phoenix in my life too yeah so but i just found out madonna does mean something so but i changed my name when i was 12 years old and that's the name that's on my driver's license madonna shinyan and i've been married five times so i've got five different last names four different last names so but um my favorite last name was Oparocha, but Donna Shinyan Oparocha. That name was just so dope to me. I like uh, that too. <laughs> I don't know what Oparocha meant. But Shinyan is is actually Asian and it refers to a hairstyle. Actually, this hairstyle, what we call a bun in America. Oh, yeah, back yeah, in back the days. In, back in the day, it was called a Shenyan. Yeah. And that's when they put their money, their money, um, but they call it money, but back in the days. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's called in the upper echelons, it's called a Shenyan. Yeah. yeah. That's Actually, what they it originated in France, but then it, it went to Asia. And I remember mm -hmm. Asian lady, she said, your middle name Shinyan, that sounds Asian. I said, it is. Yep, Badana Shinyan. But I know I, I, nobody else has that name. I've never met another Badana Shinyan ever. I've never met another Badana. Madonna Shinyan. Yes, I like Badana. it. Badana, would it be? Oh, Badana. Yes. And I remember I wanted to get my first car. Badana Shinyan Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> And I wanted to get my car registered. I wanted to get a personalized plate with my name on it. And I found out somebody else had a license plate with the name Madonna on it. So there is a Madonna in San Francisco somewhere, California somewhere, but I just never met her. I never met anybody with the name Madonna. Whenever I go to do a username or something on a website, it'll never say, oh, that name is taken. Madonna J, always open. So yeah, you know, that's I, Rex, because Rex is Greek and it means the king in Greek. So again, just kind of going back with it. Anybody come up with any names? Like, what is the name of God that you call out for? And when you call out that name, what is your circumstances? What does it look like? Nobody? I haven't heard any names yet? I know I call out El Shaddai every so often. Okay. Every so often. I always like to call Jesus Amen. when he calls himself, son of man. I mean, the, the name? Amen. And since I realized that God is the to only me, one, they call himself I am. Um, Emmanuel. Amen. Yeah. God has been a friend, you know, and I kind of, I'm amazed that like God being a friend to me is Emmanuel, that like God is with us. And I thank God for Jesus because without Jesus, we wouldn't have the Holy Spirit who's the comforter. And now in our helping us walk this walk and he is a true friend. You know, so um, to me, it's um, Emmanuel. Emmanuel is one of my favorite names of his. And it's funny because I remember telling Jenny, uh, it is one of my favorite, but it's funny because the only time I ever really hear Emmanuel is usually only around Christmas time. You know? <laughs> It's usually only around Christmas time that I ever hear that name being called upon, but that that is one of my favorite names to call on from. <clears throat> I definitely love my Messiah. You know, I, I I love them. I love calling Messiah. But again, after learning what Elroy meant and just how 
just the things that he revealed from, you know, through Sister Adwa, somebody who has never met us, somebody who doesn't know anything about us, and her being able to come through and reveal a lot of the things that has been sitting on a lot of our hearts and stuff. You know what I mean? And I know some of the things that she revealed were things that we've never, uh, were things that we've only spoken a little bit about. We've never really fully revealed those things. But for her to come through and for her to actually speak upon the things that we've been, that's been dwelling in our hearts and stuff, like, man, when I say Elroy, I'm like, Elroy, you crazy. But I know, Elroy, you see me. You know, just like I was telling Jenny the other day, Jenny, you were saying something about, uh, oh, how when we go through certain things and uh, I'll sit there and I'm like, God, you funny. <laughs> I'm a little irritated, but you're funny. He is though. He's a full on comedian. You know, he puts us through certain things that we're not ready for sometimes. And before you know it, you're like in the midst of whatever season he's putting you through and and all you can ever really do sometimes is just sit there and be like, <laughs> you know, you're, you're a little bit agitated. You're kind of a little bit on, on the cliff end of things and stuff sometimes. But then when you sit back and see what he's doing, it's like, you know, God, I don't know what you're doing, but I know you're in control. But man, you are just funny. Like, I find God to not only be my best friend, not only to be my lover, to be my counselor to be my teacher and everything like he is the biggest comedian I know in this world because some of the things I don't know about you guys but some of the things that he has put me through and some of the things he's allowed me to walk through I can't do anything more than just to sit back thank him for guiding me through that but also at the same time laughing because some of the circumstances you know, even if it's like weeks later, you sit back and you kind of reminisce on certain circumstances and you're like, oh, 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 I wasn't listening when you were trying to tell me, oh, okay, now I get it. You know, because so, sometimes he puts us in certain circumstances and he repeats it twice, sometimes three times. Like, you know, when you're in a relationship and he's been showing you signs and yet you refuse to walk away from it. And so you're like, no. No, this is who I love. No, this is this is who you brought to me. I'm pretty sure that this is the person you have for me. No, you know, he did he fell. You know, I'm just here to support him now. I'm here to, I'm here to help him. I'm here to find, you know, help him find his way to you, God. You know, I know you planted me here for a reason. And then all of a sudden he repeats that same circumstance or situation. And it's a little bit worse than the first time. And then you still get really smart, Alec, about it and you still refuse to walk away. So he repeats it a third time. And then finally, when you walk away, and sometimes you walk away because it wasn't your choice. The other person finally, you know, closed that door on you. And then weeks later, after you feel like you're brokenhearted, you sit there and all of a sudden you're like, oh, you were telling me the first time to walk away. I wasn't listening. Okay, I get it. Or, you know, how about like with your finances? I had this happening before too, where he's blessing me with money and I thought I had everything situated and I thought I had, you know, all my T's crossed, all my I's dotted, uh, dotted, you know, I've had my accounts here, I paid this and that here, and then now I get a little bit of money. Now I'm like, okay, good, I'm I'm good now. God, thank you for refilling my, uh, refilling my bank account. Thank you for adding more into my pockets. And then all of a sudden, just in the blink of an eye, you now think you roll in the money. And so you're spending things you know you're not supposed to spend. And then just as quick as he gave you and refilled that, all of a sudden next week, you're right back to where you started. And you're like, God, what happened? I thought you were going to help me. I, weren't you going to give me more money? And then all of a sudden, you, you know, he puts you in a season of stillness where now you're reminiscing the time when you had none, you asked him, he refilled it. And when you had it, you splurged it all the way. And now you're like, oh, I, I'm sorry, God, that was my bad. That was me. I wasn't listening. Okay. So again, it's just, man, he, <laughs> he has a name for all our situations. <laughs> and what I've learned is he wants us to come directly to him using those same names. You know, like if you feel like you need some saving, my redeemer, my salvation, Lord, Father, God, thank you for loving on me. You know, like, you brokenhearted? 
he is your lover. Call on him. You know, you need more increase in your finances than that. He can be your bank accountant and your loaner. Go to him, you know. But, you know, at the same time, you know, one of the things that I've learned too in my walk is I met a lot of people who, who love going to him. But the thing I've also, uh, the thing I've also learned about uh, individuals is sometimes we have this tendency of only going to him when we're down on our knees, you know, when we're, when we're down on our knees and defeated. But yet when everything is going right, we forget to go to him, you know? And, and so you kind of look at that. How do I feel as a person, as an individual? I love being able to serve people. I love being able to help people where I can, but I'm also not going to lie. I feel a certain some type of way when after I've helped somebody, then they're doing good or they, you know, everything's fine. And all of a sudden they act like you never existed. They act like you never helped out and stuff, you know, not to say that I need a praise, but a simple acknowledgement. Could you imagine how he feels too? You know, we go to him only when we want something from him, but then we don't want to go to him to say thank you for things, or we don't want to go to him to just, you know, thank him, thank us for, thank him for leading us and stuff. You know, it, it really is, again, how Sister Renee has told us the importance of our posture and our position when going to him. You know, you have an opportunity and you have, you have an opportunity, but especially an option, an option on how you're going to fall. You're either going to fall flat on your face, defeated, or you're going to fall on your knees and call on him. I love being able to call on him. So I love going on my knees to not just call on him for help, but I love going to him even with my praise reports. You know, even if it's just, just to thank him for the day. Because sometimes I can wake up in the day and because I'm still trying to wake up, I can't figure out exactly what I, I want to ask for. But I know to thank him for at least waking me up. Because at the end of the day, it wasn't an option for me to wake up six feet above or six feet under. So <laughs> if there's anything I can do, it's at least Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to wake up to a brand new day because I know that wasn't an option for me to make. So, but again, there is power in his name. And when you go to him, I just highly suggest, just the same as when you dive into your own name and you find out what the meanings behind your name, you know, I pray that even when you find the meanings behind your name, I pray that there is revelation for you. I pray that there is chains and bondages that are broken. You know, if you have a name that has been suppressing you, if you have a name that's been keeping you bonded to somebody, to some type of history, to something, I pray for our way maker to break each and every one of those chains, to cut that cord, to cut the rope, to break that chain and bondage over, over whatever keeps keeping you back. And, you know, for those who may not like their name, there's a reason why you don't like your name. It's associated with something. It could be something that may have hurt you in the past. It could be associated to somebody who may have hurt you in the past. If that's the case, you haven't healed yet. But if you discover the meaning behind your name and you discover the power behind that meaning and how you can continue to, you know, God planted a gift in each and every one of us. And our gifts don't always look the same. But those gifts are also held in our name. So if you can find out more on the meanings behind your name, you'll also be able to discover the gifts that he planted in you. And see, that's the point of being able to just kind of do a little bit more research on your own name. And when you get through doing research on your own name, do more research on his name. You'd be surprised off of the freedom that he has behind his names, you know? And that's what I pray for for each and every one of us is that we find our freedom, that we find our our bonds broken, that we find hearts mended, that we find relationships mended behind our name and even behind the name of, of God. So, but again, this is still open for discussion for anybody and everything. You know, my favorite name is, uh, the first time I heard it was praise and worship, uh, Yahweh. Every time I hear his name, I feel like, I, I, I feel like, oh, Yahweh is uh, pushing me to go deeper, pushing me to uh, to cast out uh, whatever impurities are inside myself or uh, or that name. And of course, Elroy that we just learned. And uh, I love I am. Uh, 
You know, sometimes when we talk and we say, oh, I am this, I am that, but we're actually calling on him. You know what I mean? Well, that's that's how I think of it. So uh, I I love I am, I love Yahweh, I love Elroy and my, who was the other one that I liked? Uh, um, I don't know what Elohim means, but I love that name. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Elohim being Come on, Trisha. Oh, oh, yeah. Come on, Did Trisha. Did you hear me, Jen? Say Elohim, that again. Means, Elohim means creator. Creator. Okay. Okay. He uses that in Genesis. Elohim creator. Thank you, sis. Hi. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I, I, this whole thing has been, it's just opening my eyes of, I, I barely just started looking because I, I didn't know we were supposed to look up our names. So I was doing it as you were talking, Doris. Thank you so much. Um, but I, I, but I love my names even more now. Um, the, my, okay. So the, my middle name, um, is Jan and I, I, I was so just upset that I had this. So I was born in January. My dad, thought okay we're gonna give her jan for her the month that she was born but he spelled it j-a-n-n -N. so i was like okay I don't, I don't mean to put down people from samoa but that was my dad he came straight from samoa i was like okay that is like a fobby way of you know spelling out january with two n's but anyways you know what it means it means god is gracious god is gracious um and another name that I love is my Samoan nickname, you know, cause they can't say Trisha, they call me Isa. So um, Isa is actually um, Arabic origin. And it means, one of the meanings is worshiping God. And I love to worship. I'm not the best singer, but I don't care. I love to worship. So thank you for this. I really needed to hear this. There's one name that I, I dislike that I need it. And it's a name um that somebody she didn't she wanted to give me a nickname and she called me Riz and I said why are you calling me that and she said you know it's like your name is Trisha so Riz and, and anyways she connected Riz with Trisha and when I think of Riz I think of smoking cigarettes I think of just a the my just days that I don't need to go back into you know like it was a bad girl and I was so like how you mentioned Doris, uh, people call you, uh, you know, that name. I just like, oh my gosh, how embarrassing, you know, cause I'm not that person anymore. I'm not the wannabe gangster. I, I, I'm trying to just anyway. So that's another thing, but about calling on God in his names. I just remembered, I bought a book about, his, there's four pages on this book. Of, of different names. So names that are just like giving me just goosebumps. Um, Sar Shalom, Prince of Peace, um, Goel, Defender, um, Rurash El, God Spirit. There's just so many names. So I'm just thankful that you we brought this up because I totally forgot I had this book. I got it when the pandemic started. And so, you know, I mean, these are just, you know, providers in here. I mean, just I love this. So thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you for sharing those names too. I've never heard of those names. So we can nominate you in the month of July. Yes. <laughs> but please do make sure you go ahead and share those names for us. And man, whenever you're ready, we'd love to hear more on those names and, and what it means. I looked a couple of my names up. So I looked up the name I absolutely did not like, which was my middle name. I don't know why I had to do that one first. I, you know, I'm just one of those people, I want the, 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 the bad stuff out the way first, right? But actually finding out what, what my middle name was is actually Eugenia, which is the oldest names. Like, I just feel like that's like a name that I should have when I'm 75. Um, so I, and it was my, in honor of my grandmother, it's my grandmother's name. So when I was growing up, 
my grandmother used to always scream my name, Eugenia. Now, mind you, I could not stand that name. I'm like, it's Vernay. Like, Grandma, I have to correct everybody every day about Vernay. But now you know my name, but you keep screaming Eugenia to the point, like, I remember I was like, I was that kid who would get inside before the lights came on because I did not want her to scream Eugenia out in public. And so when I looked it up, I was like, um, you know, what does it mean? And it means well-born or noble. Which kind of like made me rethink, you know, like, hmm, so I am well born. I am of noble, like I'm to be noble, you know? And so that kind of changed how I thought of just even about myself. And the other name that I just could not, and it's just because my husband does it, um, it just drives me crazy, is Vern. Um, and he'll he'll say it just to like, get under my and I don't know if you guys remember that commercial Vern Funk so I always think of the Vern Funk insurance company when I associate that name but the name Vern actually means shield anything which protects defends is a protector or defense so just off of the names that I don't like I am well-born noble and a protector and then <clears throat> my other name, which people call me, is Nay. And I didn't I, I, I like that name because that's what I, you know, that's what I've known since I was a little kid. It means to be born. So so far I have I'm too I was meant to be born, which I don't know what we're gonna we're gonna born. And I thought maybe that's because I have six kids. Maybe that's the joke on me. And then um <laughs> born well-born and protector. And I'm trying to dig up this, um, Aramis sent me my the meaning of my name. I'm trying to bring that up. So what you're saying is you were born a noble protector? Yes, yes I was, yes, well, yes, it sounds about right. <laughs> you know what the funny thing is? So just like mm -hmm. you, how you said you didn't like uh, Eugenia when you were younger, it's the same yeah. thing for me growing up. I really didn't like my first name, Doris Day. And uh, that was because same thing like you, Doris Day just seemed so old fashioned. And so for the life of me, when I was younger, I really couldn't stand that name at all. I really couldn't. But again, like how I was even saying in, a, I was saying earlier in the study, how sometimes our names can, uh, can be fluid you know, because it's always changing depending on our circumstances or situation, or sometimes it's just over time. So when I was younger, when people would call me Doris Day, I used to cringe. I couldn't stand it because it always just made me feel it was just too old fashioned. But the older I got, especially when I started working, I really learned to appreciate my name even more. So again, when I was younger, couldn't stand it. I cringed. But nowadays, when I hear that name, I feel very sociable. I feel approachable, you know? So it's funny how a name can even change over the years, you know? A name can change over the years. A name can change depending on your, your situation. Uh, a name can change depending on the season that you're going through. And sometimes it changes depending on who that name is associated, to, associated with. Because again, mind you, um, some of us don't have, some of us, are like myself, I'm not known as Doris Day in my family, but I am known as Doris Day in my workplace, you know? And then mm. even with my family, even with my family, it, with my family, especially my mom's side of the family, I'm known as Goldie, but to my nieces and my nephews and even to like uh, close friends, I'm Dee. Mm -hmm. And so depending on who's using those names, there's a feeling, there's a, there's a characteristic trait and there is emotional feelings that brew behind those names. And so like when my family calls me Koli, I feel strong, I feel respected, you know? And when I, feel, when I hear Didi, I feel either playful if it's my friends calling me or when it's my nieces and nephews calling me Didi, I feel dominant. Like I, I feel like, you know, mm. the, the disciplinarian. So it's funny how our names 
hold different meanings. It's not just the meaning of your name, but the actual weight that it carries on you, you know? So a name, it, it's, it's funny because when people think of a name, it just, oh, it's just a name, but there's so much more behind a name. You know, there's strength behind a name. There is a uh, healing behind names. There's a service offered behind names. And sometimes names can even have like this, a bond, you know, it can have a bond or a chain attached to it, you know? And uh, for an example, if, uh, if there is a sexual assault victim and the person, the suspect who assaulted her all of those years happened to be mm -hmm. a close relative, you know, that close relative had called that, that victim a certain name throughout the years, whether it was by name or sometimes it's a nickname. So as the person gets older, that nickname is like a trigger. You know, it could be a trigger for, for the victim because every time she hears that name, she sees the person who victimized her. She sees the person Ooh. who did all these dirty things to them. You know what I mean? But then yeah. once the, but sometimes once a victim finds the, you know, finds meaning behind their name, you know, some people, they discover later that their name means, you know, uh, God's gift or their name means something like that. And when a per when sometimes when a victim finally discovers the true meaning behind their full name, it's like being able to reclaim your identity. It's like being able to to break a certain bondage that's been tied around you for years or a certain weight around you for years, and it allows mm. you to just continue to step forward in this brand new identity of yours. You know, just like Jenny, yeah, she could have felt suppressed. She could have felt the weight of the world because she was named after her auntie Nakanua, you know? And, and I remember when we we're talking, she did feel like that. She felt like, you know, she felt like she was just hitting herself. She felt like she had to fill these big shoes that her family, that her family has spoken over her all this time. But when we we're talking, I was like, okay, well, that's cool. And glad for you for being able to be named by somebody apparently famous in our, uh, you know, in our culture, more power to you. But that was her name and that was her assignment. What is your assignment with this name? You know, and mm. when I asked her, she was like, uh, I go, all I'm simply saying is you could sit there and try to fill in those shoes, but that's not what God has for you. So instead of trying to fill in those shoes, why don't you start wearing your shoes with your name and make your own way? You know, and when, when we were talking about that, she was like, huh. And all of a sudden she's like, I feel like something just broke in me. I'm like, well, how do you feel now? And all of a sudden in the blink of an eye, she's like, I like my name. I feel free. And I'm like, well, good. That's what God has for us. So it's funny because, you know, like I said, I got a little deeper in my name than that. And then I discovered some things I really never noticed before, like how certain there are certain weights attached to my name. But then when I started thinking more and pondering more on what those weights were attached to or who they were associated with, I was like, oh, I get it. You know, it's like there's revelation behind discovering who we really are because our names were gifts, you know, our, our names are definitely gifts. Just like God said in Proverbs, a good name is more desirable than great riches. And if you can really find out, dive deeper into the meaning behind your name, Man, could you imagine all the riches? Could you imagine being able to walk through this world and just be like, I'm unstoppable. I'm untouchable because I know who I am. Not only do I know who I am, I know whose I am. And because of whose I am, you have this newfound freedom and this newfound identity. Not only that, you have this new power, this new strength you never really discovered before. You never even knew you had. You know, so there, there really is power behind the name. I think Tina wanted to say something. Go ahead, Tina. I knew you were going to call me out, Ms. Jen. <laughs> okay. I didn't know we were supposed to look up our names either. So while, we while you were speaking, Doris, I did it too. My first name, which I do not like, by the way, is actually Albertina. 
it means noble and bright. The only time I get called that is when I am in trouble. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> but my my name that everybody calls me, my friends, my family, everybody calls me Tina. And that means believer in Christ. And I also looked up my middle name, which is Joes, and it means brings others brings another joy or some brings others joys or something like that i totally forgot what joy means but anyways that's what i got thank you okay you know i like to say something um i want to read uh acts chapter 4 verse 12 it says that nor is there any salvation in any of in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. That Jesus, you know, it says that those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So Jesus is first and foremost, the name now we are given. Like, you know how in a relationship, you know, we take the last name of somebody like, you know, and we are called the bride of Christ. Now our last name is Jesus and we are found in Jesus. And I've kind of um, looked up some of the names, like, I don't know, Brother Williams over there. But Williams, I looked up your name. It means protector, resolute, strong-willed warrior. And then Nia, I found that it means purpose and female champ. I mean, I'm just Googling, you know, so it, purpose, female champion, aim. And then Ashley, I like this name, Ashley. Ashley is from, um, is originated from the Ash Tree. And the Ash Tree family is a part of the, the uh, Ash Tree is part of the Olive and Lilac family. Now I could say a lot about the Olive Tree because we get anointing, the anointing oil is crushed from the olives. But, um, you know, I just wanted to throw, you know, I don't know who AK is. But, you know, from just AK, I think of AK-47 and like, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, God bless. AK-47, like, you know, the word is a God, the word of God is a weapon, you know. Yes. God Come bless through. you all. Okay, Isaiah, I see you hopping on. Hey, what's going on, aunties? How are you guys doing? It's good seeing your handsome face, nephew. Thank you, thank you. It's good to see all you beautiful faces and beautiful voices and powerful, um, powerful energy. I love it. I love it. You know, I'm glad that God uh, actually just woke up. Sorry, I didn't get on earlier. Um, but it was, it was kind of funny because you know, I was just sitting there you know, waking up and I was just looking up into the sky. And I was just, it was just like that one-on-one -on -one conversation with God. And then I get, I see my phone get up like just a notification text. And then that's when you're like, hey, get on. I'm like, damn, God's really good. And then I'm hearing, you know, uh, you know, the strength of the names and, um, you know, I, I love hearing everyone else's, you know, you know, the meaning of names, because that's, that's what's very, very important to all of us is to understand who we are as an individual and to understand who we are to connect with God and how we stand with God and that anything in this world, when we come back into this existence, you know, we have another chance to connect with God. It's much, much stronger and to pull, you know, to pull other peoples to the light of God and, um, you know, some people have missions out here and, and some people have the names and those names carry the missions. And, you know, that's, that's it's funny because I was actually just talking to God about my mission. And um, and then so I get this this text and there's a lot of other people that are on the mission. I really love the fact that you guys are very strong willed with God because um, in a world where people can let go very, very fast. And I was one of them, um, you know, so. I do believe in the names are very, very carry at a young age. I didn't like my name when my aunties called me Asha. When they say Asha, I knew I was in trouble. I knew I was in trouble. So I hated that name, man. I was like, man, man, call me something else. And they started calling me boy. <laughs> I was like, man, when, they, when I hear Asha, I'm in trouble, man. So I really, but when I started finding much more in depth, man, you know, I didn't, I was a young age, man. I was running, running wild with, by thinking that like my, my culture, I was really mixed up with my cultures and stuff like that. But once I really, really, dive into myself at the age of 16, 
I found out, you know, like, the meaning of names is very, very strong. And the meaning of caring ourselves and reminding ourselves that not only that, just because, you know, our parents may give our, gave us our names or, you know, our, our family members gave us our names, but it was really God that gave them the, gave them that, that voice to say, hey, that's the name that I want you to carry for this child. And so when I hear Asael or when I hear Azel, Tali, Pa'ala, Pa'ali, Pa'ala, I'm more prone to waking up by saying that my mission, where's my mission? Because when I found out it's, uh, you know, made by God who runs with the lions. And once I know that my last name is running with lions or something like that, that's, that's, that's where it says on the, on the, um, on the dictionary, when I went to the, the hieroglyphics and I went into depth. And once, once I realized that it was very, very much more of a stronger name beyond that, that's when I was like, dang, man, like my name is not only carries for a strong, strong parent presence, but my name actually runs thousands or hundreds of hundreds of years or you know like many many lineages and i'm very very blessed to to get into that and to run into that because if i if i didn't i wouldn't really find myself as an individual like where where am i what am i doing why is this my name and stuff like that so i do appreciate you guys even bringing that up i don't want to take too much time from you guys but i do appreciate you guys bringing that up and i do i do appreciate that the fact that you guys found the strength and, and built the strength and building much more stronger with your names, because you guys, we all have beautiful names, no matter who we are in this world. God's blessed us in incredible ways. It doesn't mean in finances, doesn't mean in anything. But what matters is the heart, because we live in a dark world, and the brightest thing is the heart. So thank you guys. You know what? I want to say something to you, brother. Your name, I just looked it up, and it means uh it means God had created. Ashwell, Ashwell, God has created. But what's even more interesting is that it was a name in the Bible. Your name was actually in the Bible and he was a nephew to King David. And it's so funny because your aunts are have hearts after God like David did. So you being a nephew to them, who your aunts created this platform. Yeah. You know, they, they, they created this platform. So to, it's just amazing just to see how like God works so you know it works like that like here you are with um your aunts with hearts like david hearts after god's own hearts has a nephew <laughs> just like the rest of, just like david did so praise yeah. god bless you brother thank you for that sharing good, man. Man. all the time you guys are all good man you guys are the blessings you guys are the light okay so we got one more minute until we close this platform did anybody else want to add anything to to it Hi guys, it's Ashley. Thank you so much for <laughs> thank you so much for having me today, Doris. I loved your your sermon today. Um, you know, I never really appreciated my name. I'm like, man, why did my mom name me like this basic white girl name? Um, <laughs> you know, people would come and I'd speak to them over the phone, and they would come in, you know, to the bank and stuff looking for a white girl. You know, and so I'm like, no, it's me, promise. Um, so when I did look up my name, um, it meant a meadow where ash trees are found, which I kind of already knew. Um, which I was like, what, what does that even mean? Um, and when I looked into uh, the spiritual meaning of ash trees, um, it is it's said to be mystic one religion, have mystic one religious significance um, in European cultures, ash wood is burned because the smoke is thought to ward off evil spirits. Um, I really like that. Um, I find so much importance in that. Um, and then I looked, I, I found a definition in there and it said, Ashley invokes logical reasoning. That is totally me. <laughs> um, always logical, always needing a reason behind something. Um, but oftentimes the logical side of myself has held me back um, from a lot because I'm always looking for the why. And um, I never really thought of myself as a dreamer. So, um, I actually like the other meaning. <laughs> um, my middle name is Lose, which means rose in Tongan, um, but it is beauty and courageous. My other name is Ululani, which means uh, path to heaven or inspired by heaven. I knew that too. Um, and then my last name is Hao, which means in different dialects um, in Tongan is an earring or warrior. So I liked all my other names, <laughs> except for Ashley. I don't really like Lose because it's oftentimes like people think it's 
lose, you know? So, um, and Ululani, often people are like, are you a breadfruit? So it's nice to like get to speak about the meanings. I think the meanings behind the names are so much nicer than the actual names, but I really like this exercise. Um, I don't feel basic anymore. <laughs> um, and like your nephew had stated, Jen, um, so much power behind that. So thank you for sharing today, Doris. Hey, Ash, you know what's so funny is, so you were speaking about your name and what I wrote down was, Evil spirits, logical, rose, courageous, paths are inspiration to heaven, a warrior. My dear, do you not realize the field that you are in? Uh, for those of them who don't know, you are like our finance person, you know, you are like our coach in that area. And think about the things that you are doing. Think about the seasons and the path that you're on in helping our poly people and the things that you're breaking them away. And in our finances, you know, I think about the, the chains attached with our poly people and our and our finances, you know, we tend to, mind you, everybody knows, polys are real good when it comes to like funerals and stuff like that, because you got to keep giving, giving, giving. And yet here you are, a warrior, warning off all the evil spirits in the financial world with your logical and courageous self and on a path to inspire people to heaven. Come on. My dear, walk with your name. You are a warrior in that finance game, my dear. Okay. So I love that name. I am so serious. Like, and that's what I'm talking about behind the power of our names. Once we start to realize the mean, the true meaning behind our name, like God has a gift for each and every one of us and it's in our name. And if we could just discover that and then start realizing the path you're on, realize the seasons that you've overcome, the things that you've uh, been saved from. Like if you could just combine, throw your whole entire life, the way you've walked, how you represented, uh, how you were represented in this world and to how people look at you. Like if you throw that all into a basket and then truly learn the meaning behind your name, you start to understand and you start to realize that God already has it in your name, the path that he wants you to be on. He has it in your name. The career you're supposed to be at he already has it in your name the people the way you're supposed to be serving people he already has it in your name whether or not you are supposed to serve people but it's in our name i kid you not it's in our name it's not just what people call us but there is our full identity and what god called us to be behind our name girl i love your name you are right in the right field you keep you keep going ahead and getting rid of all those evil spirits in that finance world girl because i'm about to come to you in like the next two weeks anyways for that but yeah i'm just i'm just saying that's a breakthrough for your name <laughs> okay so uh we we are past the time right now but um i thank you guys for hopping on and joining us tonight uh yeah, I just thank you guys for being here and being supportive. Doris, thank you so much for Jehovah Jireh for just, uh, uh, you know, this study tonight. And thank you guys for even adding in your prayers and 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 your, the meanings of your own name. So thank you guys for this. Uh, Aramis, <laughs> Aramis is probably tired of praying. Aramis, can you pray over us tonight? Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this study. I thank you, Father God, that your name is above every name, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that the name of Jesus is glorified, Father God. That, that every knee and every tongue shall confess, Father. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, Father God. So I thank you, Father God, for what you are doing upon the earth, Father God. I thank you for this Bible study, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for the study of our names, Father God. I ask, Lord, that you will continue, Father God, to be glorified, Father God. I ask, Lord, that you will bless each and every one of us, Father God. Um, Doris and um, Agnese, Father God, Jennifer, Ashwell, 
uh, Ashley, Nia, AK, Sarah, Father God, but Donna, Verne, Father God, Trisha, Father God, we, I uplift these people to you, Father God. These are your people, Father God, called by your name, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for doing a, a, a work in their life, Father God, and that they that we may all see, Father God, Jesus, Father God. I ask, Lord, that you will bless this evening, bless their weekend, Father God, and continue to show up in their life, Father God. But above else, Father God, I pray, Father God, that this month, Father God, that you will show up in their life, Father God, as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides, Father God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. I love you guys. <laughs>